crochet by day, defense by night, a shelter in this time of storm. No fears or loss, no foes of fright, a shelter in the time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a weary land. A weary land, my Jesus is a rock in the weary land. He's my shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may around us be. A shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm. My, 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 my. Jesus is a rock in the weary land. A weary land. A weary land. My Jesus is a rock in the weary land. A weary land, my Jesus is a rock in the weary land. He my shelter in the time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in the weary land. A weary land, a weary land, my Jesus is a rock in the weary land. He my shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears are lost, no bones are bright, a shelter in the time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a weary land, a weary land, my Jesus is a rock. In the weary land, be my shelter in the time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is the rock in the weary land. A weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is the rock in the weary land. He is my shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother Xavier and Walker for uh, leading us in those selection this morning. Uh, he, he, that's my son, and I'm proud of him. I'm proud of what he's doing. Uh, he's 17 years old, and he uh, loves the Lord, and I am uh, so thankful for that. And I know that there are uh, so many things that we are going to uh, see in the future uh, with him. Uh, so uh, please pray for him. Pray, pray for him. Pray for all of our young men at this congregation. Pray for them all. Uh, they are not the, the future. They are actually the now, particularly at the uh, East Side Church of Christ. Isn't that all right? Somebody say amen, if you will. You agree with me? That's all that means. That's all amen is, that you agree with me. They are not just the church of the future. They are the church of the now. We need them working and doing things right now. Uh, good to see everybody present on this uh, Sunday morning. If you will, please turn to the Old Testament. Uh, we'll be in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, and we'll begin reading uh, verse number, we'll, be, we'll read verse number 9. Uh, we'll go uh, verse number 9. We'll go verse number 9. Verse number 9, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse number 9. Uh, Paul said in uh, Romans, the 15th chapter, verse number 4, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh, that we, uh, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have Home. So we go back to the Old Testament for the purpose of learning, seeing how God dealt with his uh, chosen, chosen uh, children, his chosen people. Uh, the Bible says the heart, in Jeremiah the 17th chapter, verse number 9, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I believe that's enough. That's enough. Am I right about that? That's, my, that's enough. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
The title for this morning's lesson is, What About the Heart? What About the Heart? Well, first of all, church, I want, you to, I want you to let you know the type of heart that I am talking about. Uh, I, I want you to know that I'm not talking about the physical heart. I'm not talking about the heart that pumps blood uh, through the body. I'm not talking about that heart that's in your chest. You know the one where you put your hand over uh, when you are uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I I'm not talking about that physical heart. I, I know that heart is important. I, I want you to know this morning that the physical heart is a very important uh, to the physical health of your body. See, as long as the heart is doing what it's supposed to do, as long as the heart is functioning the way it is supposed to function, Abel Smith, as long as the heart is uh, supplying blood through uh, the arteries of the body, then every extremity of the body ought to be reached with the blood flow from the heart. As long as the heart is pumping in a manner in which it should, life should be sustainable. Is that all right? Is that too much for you this morning to let you know that the, uh, there's something about this physical heart that's very important to the physical body being able to do what it does. If there is problems uh, with the heart, there is going to be problems uh, with the body. Does that make sense? If there are problems with the physical heart, there are going to be problems with the physical body. Uh, let me give you an example. If your heart does not pump blood all the way to the extremities of the lower part of your body, uh, let's say particularly on the right side, and blood ceases to flow into your foot, then we've got a problem. And that problem is that foot may need to be amputated because the blood flow does not work anymore. It does not flow from the heart to the extremity of the body. And that's a problem. And when that happens, I want you to know, church, that when something happens to the heart and there is no flow of blood to the foot, then there's a problem with the body. And that problem essentially comes from that pumping thing in your chest called the heart. So I'm not talking about that heart, though. But more importantly, I'm talking about the spiritual heart of man, the intellect of man. I'm talking about what makes man tick. I'm talking about the, the spiritual heart, not the physical heart. And just as if there was a problem with the physical heart, if there's a problem with the spiritual heart, I want you to know this morning, Brother Boone, that there will be a problem with the physical, with the spiritual body of the heart. Uh, let, 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 me, let me help you to understand. As uniquely, uh, 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 as uniquely uh, 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 contacted uh, the heart is with the physical body, so is the spirit of the body, the spiritual heart of the body. Here's what I mean. Did you know that the heart is capable of doing some things uh, that are extraordinary. Hatred comes from the heart. Malice comes from the heart. Envy comes from the heart. Pride comes from the heart. Mischief Mischief comes from the heart. Disobedience comes from the heart. Evilness comes from the heart. Now, did you know that love also comes from the heart? Kind heartedness comes from the heart. Isn't it interesting to know that in the 
same arena, in the same area, there is a heart of goodness that is in the proximity. It houses itself. It abodes with everything that deals with love. Hatred and love exist together in the heart. How is it possible that those two could coexist with each other? See, I'm here to tell you, when you've got heart trouble and you've got physical heart problems, the first thing you ought to do is go to a cardiologist. You need to go through a series of tests. Uh, maybe they'll give you a stress test. Uh, maybe you'll get on that trail mill and begin to walk. Maybe they'll give you a nuclear te a stress test. Uh, maybe you will have to go up under uh, some type of, of medication to help your heart. Uh, you know, there are sometimes uh, people's heart skip beats. Uh, I remember uh, the very first time my heart skipped a beat. I'm going to give you an analogy this morning. My heart skipped a beat when I first saw my wife. Man, my heart skipped a beat, and I thought something was wrong with me. I, I thought maybe I needed to go and see a cardiologist. Uh, but I want you to understand that what coexists within that physical heart also affects what happens in the spiritual heart. Because my body was affected by what I saw and my physical heart skipped a beat. Now, listen, listen, listen. I, I want you to understand this morning that, that the heart is what the heart is. So what about this heart? Uh, Brooke Crutchfield, if you will, uh, look at our text again, Jeremiah of the 17th chapter, verse number 9, and, and, and read uh, what... Uh, the uh, prophet Jeremiah said in verse number nine. He says what? The heart is deceitful. He said that the heart, the intellect, uh, that which makes up the man, uh, that uh, which comes out of the man is deceitful. What? Deceitful. Oh no, you can't tell me that, Brother Wallace. Who do you think you are to say that as good a person as I am. I'm a righteous person. I'm a kind-hearted person. I, I'm a person that does everything right. I, I'm a person that understands that uh, my heart is a good heart. I, I got a kind heart. I'm always nice to people. I'm always doing those things uh, which are right. Uh, there is no guile in me. There's no malicious intent in my heart. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my heart. Who do you think you are to say that my heart is desperately, desperately wicked? I, I want you to know uh, that when uh, Jeremiah wrote this, he was writing this not just to the children of Israel. He was writing it to us today. Every one of us, from the preacher to the pews, have a desperately wicked heart. Hmm. Yeah, every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are or who you think you are. It does not matter how much scripture you have studied, how much scripture you have memorized. It does not matter how much you think your walk is perfectly in line with the word of God. The heart is desperately wicked. Let me show you. You ever seen somebody brush mocks? It's been in the desert where there is no water. The temperature is blazing. They're crawling through the desert. They are halfway dead and uh, they see you, Brother Smith, and the first thing out of their mouth is water, water. All you want to do 
is give that man water because he is desperately seeking water and you want to comfort him. That's what, that's what Jeremiah is talking about when he says desperately wicked. It's something that this physical body craves after. Oh my goodness. It's too silent this morning. Maybe I'm touching some hearts. Maybe some hearts are being pricked to understanding that yes, man's heart is desperately wicked. Oh, come on now. Uh, you understand what I'm saying, Brother Crutchfield? Uh, Brother Crutchfield's a a man and with me this morning. Somebody's saying amen with me. Jeremiah wants us to know that without the help of God, you and I are desperately wicked. Amen. Wicked. So uh, don't think yourself to be so high and so mighty that you cannot be touched. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so don't say what you would not do. You know, some people say, oh, did you hear about him? Did you hear about her? I, I don't believe that she did that. I, I can't believe that he did that. But yes, he did do that. She did do that. Don't ever say what you won't do. The heart is desperately wicked. Wicked. As much as we try, as much as we put effort into doing right, the heart is wicked. As much as we try, as much as we pray, as much as we read the word of God, the heart is desperately wicked. It seeks after it. Come on now, everybody should say amen. Uh, do, have you ever had a wicked thought in your mind before? And you don't know where it came from? You go, Lord, God forgive me for that thought. The heart is desperately Wicked, but uh, read on uh, what Jeremiah says in verse number uh, number nine of Jeremiah the seventeenth chapter. Read. The heart is desperately. The heart is desperately wicked. Rather, the heart is deceitful above all things. It is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? You you know what that means? That means I don't even know my own heart. You don't know your heart. I don't know my wife's heart. You don't know your wife's heart. She doesn't know your heart. The heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. And you thought you knew him. You thought you knew everything about her. You said, no way. She did that. There's an impossibility that he was able to conjure up a story like that. You can't get me to believe that. The heart is desperately wicked. You may give to those who are hungry. You may give to those who thirst. You may give more money than anybody in the church. You drop more money in the plate than anybody else. You sing. You're here every Sunday. you Sunday school. Sunday evenings, Wednesday night. But the heart is desperately wicked. And then he says, and who can know it? Nobody. So that's why it's easy to say when things happen, you hear people go, that's why you can't put, you can't put nothing past anybody. Because you don't know what 
they will do. See, because the heart is something. Let me tell you something. We don't know what goes on inside the heart of another human being. And then you got to understand, we barely can control what goes on in our own heart. Let, something do, let somebody do something to one of your children. The loves of your lives. You've cared for them. You've nurtured them. You've protected them. And somebody does something to one of your children, the most innocent on the planet. The heart is desperately wicked. I'm just trying to get us to, uh, to help us this morning because, see, there's some things that we have to do uh, with this heart. No differently than the thing that we have to do with this heart. See, Brother Ragnar, from time to time, we need to get a checkup on this heart. Uh, we go to the cardiologist to make sure that this heart is ticking right. Uh, we go to that cardiologist and he may say, hey, look, we got a little problem here. Uh, we need to give you a little bit of medicine to uh, make sure that this heart is ticking the way it ought to be ticking. Uh, some people uh, may have to go to surgery. The cardiologist said, hey, listen, the heart is not working right. A matter of fact, the heart is so weak that we need to put a defibrillator in your chest. We need to put a pacemaker in your chest uh, to help with the pumping of the heart. Because if the physical heart does not pump the blood through the arteries, through the extremities of the body, then there is trouble. So no differently than the physical checkup with the heart should take place, there should be a physical or a spiritual checkup with the heart that resides here. I think that one's just as important if not more important that the spiritual heart gets a checkup from time to time. Isn't that all right? Yeah. Uh, so what does that checkup uh, consist of? Brother Crutchfield, uh, go to uh, Proverbs, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, verse number uh, uh, 23. Uh, there are some things that has to happen uh, with the spiritual heart that's very, very important. Read what it says, Brother Crutchfield. Keep thy heart. He says, do what? Keep thy heart. He said, Keep thy heart, or some of your versions may say, guard your heart. We know. Keep thy heart with all diligence. With all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. Solomon said, keep or guard your heart. Guard it. Let me tell you what that means. For years, I worked at a company where in order to get into the facility, you had to go through a series or a process of things in order to gain access into the location. There were men that stood there. They were called guards. Uh, uh, the purpose of those guards was to keep people out who did not have the credentials to come in. Come on now, say amen. Some of you work at locations where they do that right now. You go through what's called a, an inspection. There's a process. You may go through a metal detector. Uh, you may go through a, 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 a metal detector and you may beep and someone warns you. Go to any courthouse in any municipality and you will meet a guard before you gain asset into that particular courthouse. Am I right about it? Say amen. And if you beep, they're going to warn you. They're going to make sure that you are able to come in the church uh, with the spiritual uh, heart. When Solomon says guard it, that means there's certain things you just don't let in. There's certain people you just don't let in. You guard it. 
You guard your heart because it, the, the, the B clause of, that, of, of 4 and 23 said because it is the issues of the what? Of life. Of life. Everything flows from here. It, it, it's just like when Paul uh, said in 1 Corinthians the ninth chapter, verse number 27, he said, I bring my body into subjection lest it be a castaway. And what he's saying is, in order for the body to behave a certain way, I first have to bring the mind into subjection because the mind controls the physical body. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. He's saying, uh, 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 Jeremiah is saying, or uh, uh, Solomon is saying, guard it. Don't let certain things in. Don't let certain people in. And, 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 and the preacher don't have to tell you who those three people are. You know who they are. You know who those people are. I know who the people are in my life that I got to, I got to make sure that they don't get in here because if they get in here, they have now caused some problem for me. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so, so he, he says, guard your heart. Keep your heart. Don't let negativity into your heart. Do you realize if, if, watch this, if, you, if folks just constantly tell you things that are negative, you will probably become what they say. You will never grow up to be anything. The heart takes that. Your mama wasn't nothing, and you won't be nothing either. Your daddy was low down, and you gonna be low down. Can't you do anything right? They said you'd never be able to do it. And you weren't. You failed again. And again. And again. You're a failure. Do you know you disgust me? You are disgusting. Every time you around. Nothing goes right. I really don't know what to do with you. I've asked over and over and over again. And you still can't get it. What's so hard with learning that? Is it that difficult? Everybody knows that you never get it right. How can you be that stupid? Are you really that dumb? You can't do anything right. You instill that in a person's heart and that's what they began to believe. That's why it's so important that you guard your heart. You know what to let in and you know who to let in. Go back to our text. Go to Jeremiah, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, 17th chapter. And I want you to begin reading at verse number uh, seven because I want to tie this all into what Jeremiah is saying when he said uh, the heart is uh, deceitful and, and desperately uh, wicked. Who can uh, know it? Read verse number seven, if you will, Brother Crutchfield. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. I ain't trusting in you, Brother Smith. You're a great guy. You're a good guy. 
You're kind hearted. I like you. We like birds of the feather. We flock together. Sometimes what you think is the same thing that I think. But I can't trust in you because your heart can be desperately wicked. My heart can be desperately wicked. So I'm going to put my trust in God and I'm advising you to do the same thing. Because if you put your trust in me, I am most certainly going to let you down. And if I put my trust in you, you are most certainly going to let me down. So I have decided to put my trust in God. Because feel because he what? Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. Who hope the Lord is. I put my hope in God. I cannot put my hope in man. I cannot put my confidence in man. I cannot put my trust in man. And watch this. I can't even put my trust in me. I cannot put my trust in me. Me lets me down more than anybody. Has there been people in this world that have let me down? You betcha. Over and over and over again. But get, get this, Brother Mark. I've let myself down more than all of the people who have let me down combined. I put my trust in God. I won't even put my trust in me. Because if I put myself, my trust in me, I am deceiving myself to think that I'm that righteous, to think that I'm just that good, to think that I got it all together when I don't. Say amen when you can, because you don't either. None of us do. The only way we have it together is if we've got God on our side and we put our trust in him. Now, now, now read, read, read on to verse uh, number eight, if you will. For he shall be as a tree. Watch this. For he, talking about God, should be as a tree planted by the waters. By the waters that what? That spread it out her roots by that the river. spread it out her roots. And he, shall not see when he cometh. Say that again, brother. When he cometh, what? And shall not see when heat cometh. When heat cometh, keep going. But her leaf shall be green. But her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. And shall not be terrible in the year of drought. Now watch this. The, the, uh, listen. Everything is there. I'm talking about what about this heart? Everything is there for the heart. If you trusted in God. If you put your confidence, if your faith is in God, everything you need is right there. He said, like a tree planted by the waters. But Mark, we know that a plant, in order for it to nourish, in order for it to grow, in order for it to have strong root, it's got to have water. And when it has water, it will produce certain things. The leaves are green. If it's a type of tree that produces the fruit, it produces fruit. And matter of fact, it produces good fruit. It can't be moved. But a man that trusted in his own heart would rather be in the drought and the heat of a desert than be planted by the waters that nourish and nurture and cause it to grow up to be strong and produce fruit and good fruit. Read on verse number 11, if you will, Brother Cartrio. Or verse number 10. Which one? What, 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 nine? Verse number 19. Uh, yeah, yeah. Read, read verse number 10. The heart is, the, well, I, the Lord, search the heart. Uh-huh. I try the reins. I, the Lord, search the heart. Go on, read. I try the reins. I try the reins. 
even to give every man even to give every man according to his ways according to his way God puts us in certain situations he puts us in certain situations where the heart has to make a decision and he's watching to see what you and I are going to do and he says you're going to receive your recompense. You will receive your just due. You will receive your reward based off of your life, based off of the tests or the trials that I put you in. What he wants you to do is trust in him. Listen, church, you cannot even trust in your own heart. If you say you're right, righteous, you're deceiving yourself. If you say you, you're able to, uh, to uh, listen, listen, have you, have you ever told yourself that I'm strong enough to put myself in this situation and not be scared by it? Am I strong enough? Hey, you told yourself, I I'm so strong, I know I can put myself right in the middle of this and walk out of it and not even be touched. You, you, you ever did that, Brother, Brother Smith? You, you said, I, I got this. I got this. I'll be able to walk through this fire and not even have my hair be singed. See, see, we do that from time to time. And if we're judgment day honest, every last one of us has put ourselves in the situation where we know we've done things and do, are doing things and have done things, put ourselves in precarious situation because we think we're righteous enough. We think we're strong enough. We think we got halos and wings and angels and we can get through this. You know James Brown? You know the Godfather of Soul? Back in the 70s, you remember Bootsy Collins. You know, Bootsy Collins was his bass man. And do you know what James Brown did to Bootsy Collins? He fired him. He fired him. He fired him because he was using drugs. He was getting high. They were taking heroin. And James Brown didn't want to have nothing to do with that. James Brown was all about uh, race relations, equality, uh, doing better. And that's what James Brown was about. He was never about drugs, never about alcohol, until he turned 40 years old and everything changed about the godfather of soul. Everything changed. Here's a man that was an advocate for doing everything that was right, now doing everything that was wrong. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. The only way you and I can ever know that our hearts are right is if we guard it against everything that comes its way that's unrighteous. Look at verse number 17 of our text. And then we'll be done. Be not a terror unto me, be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. There's no greater help than God. Amen. No greater help in a time of trouble yes, sir. than in God. This message is what about the heart? 
But heart should always trust in God and not in itself. Man's intellect is always trying to deceive. Always desperately wicked. That's why we always have to hang on to God's unchanging hand. If not, we'll find ourselves in the same situation. Mark Crutchfield, read seven, uh, Jeremiah the 17th chapter, verse number 14. And then we'll be closed. Then we'll close. Jeremiah 17 chapter, verse number 14. Heal me, O Lord. He says, heal me, O Lord. And I shall be healed. And I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Save me, and I should be saved. For thou art my praise. Did you hear that today, church? We have to rely on God. We must rely on God Amen. for all our healing, for all our salvation. Everything we do has to trust in God, has to rely on God. And our heart has to be involved in it. God knows. He knows every nook, every corner, every spot in here. He knows this better than you know this. And when the heart is pricked, when it's sincerely pricked, then a change takes place. And when a change takes place here, it follows everywhere else. Yeah. You know why I know that to be true? Acts the second chapter, verse number 37. It says, and when they heard this, they were what? Prick in their where? Heart. In their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's about the heart. The heart has to change before anything changes. That's why people struggle and, and, and it becomes so hard for them to, to, to do things that are related to a change taking place because they have yet to be pricked in their hearts. When your heart is pricked, a change takes place and it's not just visible to you, it's visible to others. They see that there's a change. Your speech changes. Your behavior changes. And because your speech and your behavior change, your thought pattern is what changed. Your heart is what changed. So when we are concerned about the heart, and when things change, when we are pricked in our heart, then that means we put our trust in God. Confidence and our faith is now in him. No differently than the people on the day of Pentecost. In Acts the second chapter, verse number 37, when they were pricked in their heart, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter responded and said, you need to be baptized. You need to repent of your sin. That's right. For the remission of your sin, you'll be baptized and a change takes place. Conversion takes place when one goes down into the watery grave of baptism. Yeah. Church, you've heard the word of God on this day. I hope, trust, and pray that there's something that's been said this morning to help you, uh, to help all of us on a very difficult journey from earth to heaven. A journey that is uh, inlated with Satan's trickery, his subtleness. Uh, isn't that wonderful? His subtleness. Uh, not just his trickery, trickery, Bro Smith, but his subtleness and how he uh, deceives us. That's why he is called uh, the great deceiver, because his job is to deceive us into believing things that are not so. You've heard the word of God on the day. You become a member of the church that you can read about in the Bible, not just the church, but the church that Jesus died for. The only one that you could read about in the Bible. The only one that was ever established in the Bible. You become a member of that by hearing the word. 
according to Romans the 10th chapter, verse number 17. Believing in it according to Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 6. Repenting of your sins according to uh, Romans the 9th chapter, verse number 9 and 10. And then confessing the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue. No differently than the Ethiopian eunuch did in Acts the 8th chapter, verse number 26 through 40. And then being baptized, being immersed into water for the remission of your sin and then be and then receive uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then you guard in the heart. Then you begin to keep that heart. And God will help you along the way as long as you trust in him. Live faithfully unto death according to Revelation the second chapter verse number 10. You've heard the word. Why don't you stand as we sing the Savior song of invitation. Number 819, number 819. Glory, hallelujah, I, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved.